Chapter 7 13 Million Words The task of receiving, relaying, processing and interpreting the data coming in simultaneously on a 24-hour basis for several months from the several scientific and many engineering sources of the Mariner spacecraft was of truly monumental proportions. This activity involved five DSIF tracking stations scattered around the world, a communications network, two computing stations and auxiliary facilities, and some 400 personnel over a four-month period. Although the Mariner scientific information could be stored and subsequently processed at a later non-real time, it was necessary to make tracking and position data available almost as soon as it was received in real time, so that the mid-course manoeuvre might be computed and transmitted to the spacecraft, and to further perfect the predicted trajectory and arrival time at Venus. The engineering performance of the many spacecraft subsystems was also a vital concern. Inaccurate operation in any of the several areas could endanger the success of the entire mission. The performance of the attitude control system, the earth and sun sensors, the power system and communications were all of critical importance. Corrective action was possible in certain subsystems where trouble could be predicted from the data or where limited breakdown had occurred. To integrate all the varied activities necessary to accomplish the mission objectives, an organisation was formed within JPL to coordinate the DSIF, the communications network, the work of engineering and scientific advisory panels, and the computer facilities required to evaluate the data. This organisation was known as the Space Flight Operations Complex. For operational purposes only, it included the Space Flight Operations Centre, a communication centre, and a central computing facility, CCF. The DSIF was responsive to the requirements of the organisation, but was not an integral part of it. A Space Flight Operations Director was responsible for integrating these many functions into a worldwide Mariner spaceflight organisation. It was an exhausting 109-day task, one that would severely tax all the resources of JPL in terms of know-how, qualified personnel, time and equipment before Mariner completed its encounter with Venus. Communication Control The communication centre at JPL in Pasadena was one of the most active areas during the many days and nights of the Mariner 2 mission. All of the teletype and radio lines from the Cape, South Africa, Australia and Goldstone terminated in this centre. A high-speed data line bypassed the communication centre, linking Goldstone directly with the central computing facility for quick, real-time computer processing of vital flight information. From the communication centre, the teletype data and voice circuits were connected to several areas within JPL, where the mission control activities were centred and where the data output was being studied. The communication centre was equipped with teletype, paper page printers and paper tape hole reperforators, which received and transmitted data word and number groups. The teletype lines terminating at the centre included circuits for Goldstone, South Africa, Australia and Cape Canaveral. There were three lines to Goldstone for full-time one-way data transmission. Duplex, simultaneous two-way transmission was available to Woomera and South Africa on a full-time basis. In each case, a secondary circuit was provided to the overseas sites for the use during critical periods and in case the primary radio teletype circuits had transmission difficulties. The secondary circuits used different radio transmission paths in order to reduce the chance of complete loss of contact for any extended period of time. The mobile tracking station in South Africa used the Johannesburg communication facilities. Two one-way circuits for testing and control purposes were open to Cape Canaveral from a month before until the spaceflight was launched. Lines from the communication centre to the spaceflight operations centre at JPL terminated in page printers and reperforators in several locations. Voice circuits connected all of the stations with the operations centre through the communication centre. Long-distance radio telephone calls were placed to South Africa to establish contact before the launch sequence was started. Woomera used the Project Mercury voice circuits to the United States during launch and for three days after. The Operation Centre The actual nerve centre of the Mariner operation was the Space Flight Operations Centre, SFOC, at Pasadena. 
Here, technical and scientific advisory panels reported to the project manager and the Mariner test director on the performance of the spacecraft in flight, analysed trajectories, calculated the commands for the mid-course trajectory correction, and studied the scientific aspects of the mission. These panels were a spacecraft data analysis team, a scientific data group, an orbit determination group, a tracking data analysis group, and a mid-course command group. The spacecraft data analysis team analysed the engineering data transmitted from the spacecraft to evaluate the performance of the subsystems in flight. The team was composed of one or more of the engineers responsible for each of the spacecraft subsystems and a chairman. The science data group was composed of the project scientist and certain other scientists associated with the experiments on board the spacecraft. This group evaluated the data from the scientific experiments while Mariner was in flight and advised the test director on the scientific status of the mission. The science data group was on a continuous duty until 48 hours after launch and at other times during the mission. During encounter with Venus, the group was also in contact with the scientific experimenters from other participating organisations who were working with JPL. A tracking data analysis group analysed the tracking data to be used in the orbit determination. They also assessed the performance of the DSIF facilities and equipment used to obtain the data. The orbit determination group used the tracking data to produce estimates of the actual spacecraft trajectory and to compute the spacecraft path with respect to the Earth, Venus and the Sun. These calculations were made once each day before the mid-course manoeuvre, once a week during the cruise phase and daily during the immediate after the planet encounter. The operations centre was equipped with lighted boards on which the progress of the mission was displayed. This information included trajectory data, spacecraft performance, temperature and pressure readings, and other data telemetered from the spacecraft subsystems. Closed-circuit television was used for coordinating the activities of the SFOC. Operating personnel could use television monitors in four consoles, which were linked to six fixed cameras viewing teletype page printers. The entire operations room could be kept under surveillance by the project manager, the test director, or the DSIF operations manager, using cameras controlled in pan, tilt and zoom. Central Computing Facility During the Mariner 2 mission, the JPL Central Computing Facility, CCF, produced approximately 13.1 million data words, or over 90 million binary bits of computer data. Binary bit equals a discrete unit of information intelligible to a digital computer. One data word equals seven binary bits. In the four-month operation, about 100,000 tracking and telemetering data cards were received and processed, yielding over 1.2 million computer pages of tabulated, processed and analysed data for evaluation by the engineers and scientists. Approximately 1,000 miles of magnetic tape were used in the 1,056 rolls recorded by the DSIF. The Central Computing Facility processed and reduced tracking and telemeter data from the spacecraft as recorded and relayed by the stations of the DSIF. The tracking information was the basis for orbital calculations and command decisions. After delivery of telemeter data on the magnetic tapes by DSIF, the CCF stored the data for later reduction and analysis. Where telemetry data was being processed in real or near real time, certain critical engineering and scientific functions were programmed to print out an alarm reading when selected measurements in the data were outside specified limits. The CCF consists of three stations at JPL. Station C, the primary computing facility. Station D, the secondary installation. And the telemetry processing station, TPS. Station C was the principal installation for the processing both tracking and telemetry data received from the DSIF tracking stations, both in real and non-real time. The station was equipped with a high-speed general-purpose digital computer with a 32,168 word memory and two input-output channels, each able to handle six tape units. The associated card handling equipment was also available. Tape translators or converters were provided for converting teletype data and other digital information into magnetic tape format for computer input. The teletype to tape unit operated at a rate of 300 characters per second. 
A smaller computer acted as a satellite of the larger unit, performing bookkeeping and such related functions as card punching, card reading and listing. A high-speed unit microfilmed magnetic tape printout was received from the large computer. It provided quick-look copy within a 30 minutes of the processing of raw data. Various paper-tape-to-card and card-to-paper-tape converters were used to eliminate human error in converting teletype data tapes to computer cards. Station C also utilised another computer as a real-time monitor and to prepare a magnetic tape file of all the telemetered measurements for input to the large computer. Station D was the secondary or backup computational facility, primarily intended for use in case of equipment failure in Station C. During certain critical phases of the Mariner mission launch, orbit determination, mid-course manoeuvre, this facility paralleled the operations in Station C. Station D is equipped with three computers and various card-to-tape converters and teletype equipment. The telemetry processing station received and processed all demodulated data that recovered from the radio carrier on magnetic tapes recorded at the DSIF stations. The TPS output was digital magnetic tapes suitable for computer entry. The TPS equipment included FM discriminators, a code translator, a device for converting data from analog to digital form, and magnetic tape recorders. Basically, the equipment accepted the digital outputs from the tape units, the analog to digital converter, and the code translator, and put them in digital tape format for the computer input. As the launch operation started on August the 27th, the powered flight portion of the Space Trajectories program was run at launch minus five minutes, L minus five, and was repeated several times because of holds at AMR. The orbit determination program was run at liftoff to calculate the first orbit predictions used for aiding the DSIF in finding the spacecraft in flight. During the 12 hours following launch, both C and D stations performed parallel computations on tracking data. Station D discontinued spaceflight operations at L plus 12 hours and resumed at the beginning of the mid-course manoeuvre phase. Tracking data, processing and mid-course manoeuvre studies were conducted daily until the mid-course manoeuvre was performed at L plus 8 days. For the following 97 days, tracking data were processed once each week for orbit determination. Starting three days before the encounter, tracking data were processed daily until the beginning of the encounter phase. Tracking data processing was conducted in near real time throughout encounter day and daily for two days thereafter. For these three days, tracking data were handled in Station D in order to permit exclusive use of Station C for telemetry data processing and analysis. After this three-day period, including the encounter, Station C processed the tracking data every sixth day until the mission terminated on L plus 129 days. Telemetry data was processed in a different manner. Following the launch, DSIF Station 5 at South Africa received the telemetry signal first, demodulated it, and put it in the proper format for teletype transmission to JPL. The other DSIF stations followed in sequence as the spacecraft was heard in other parts of the world. For two days after launch, the computers processed telemetry data as required by the spacecraft data analysis team. During those periods when the large computer was processing tracking data, a secondary unit supplied quick-look data in near real time. When Goldstone was listening to the spacecraft, quick-look data were processed in real-time, using the high-speed data line direct to the central computing facility. For the 106 days that Mariner was actually in Mode 2, cruise, the telemetry data was processed 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Data were presented to the engineering and science analysis teams in quick-look format every 3 hours, except for short maintenance interruptions, one computer failure, and a major modification requiring three days when a backup data process mode of operation was used. The large computer performed full processing and analysis of engineering and science data seven days a week from launch until the Venus encounter. On encounter day, the secondary Station C computer processed telemetry data from the high-speed Goldstone line. Data on magnetic tapes produced by the computer were processed and analysed by the large unit in near real time every 30 minutes. The computer processing and delivery time during this operation 
varied from four and a half to seven minutes.